Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching A View to a Kill by John Glenn starring Sir Roger Moore. It's here guys, the end of the Roger Moore era. He's, he's been the longest uh, running Bond so far with seven films. I think Connery had six official films with Never Say Never Again being the unofficial one. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm going to watch the unofficial films after finishing the main movies. Um, also, if you guys are unaware, I've been making my way through the entire Bond franchise and I've been honestly having a blast. Uh, I'll leave a link up there somewhere for the entire playlist for every single Bond movie till this one. And please subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the rest. Um, okay, the last movie we saw was Octopussy. And, I, and although I enjoyed the great locations and fantastic action sequences, I found the movie to be one of the weaker entries into the franchise. The writing wasn't the best and the story was pretty hard to follow. It was all over the place. Looks like John Glenn is back to direct his, what, third Bond movie. And I think he's a very competent director when he has a solid script to work with. Um, I also hear Richard Maybaum is back as one of the scriptwriters. He's a very experienced Bond writer and I guess he has more uh, hits than misses. So I'm pretty excited to see where he takes Roger Moore in his final outing as the world's most famous secret agent. I have no idea about the plot of this movie or who else is starring in it. I already felt Roger Moore was getting a little too old for the role. Um, and I'm glad it's his last Bond film in, in a sense, but I also think I'm going to miss him when he's gone. <laughs> but before we get into it, to help support the channel, I have Rachel on Patreon full of reviews and reactions to this movie and over 160 movies, TV shows, early access and weekly polls for what to watch next. You'll need your own copy to watch along. The link's in the description below, by the way. Please consider being a patron. Please subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you like this video. Dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. A View to a Kill. Glenn. Moore. Let's go. You can't have a Bond film without a helicopter. So... I have to assume Bond is on a mission. Yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> it's not Roger Moore who's doing this all this stunt work. He's probably in his late 50s by now, so it's somebody else. It's a stunt man. Hey, I think this is the Beach Boys. I forget the name of the song, but I definitely recognize it. It's the Beach Boys. Oh! Bada boom! Oh, yes! I love practical explosions. <laughs> the British flag. Oh, man. Could it be more obvious? Be a good girl, would you? And uh, put her on automatic? A couple of these sets are very well made with these contraptions and stuff. <laughs> Commander Bond. Call me James. Meeting you with a view to wake you. I like this song. It's so 80s. Christopher Walken. That dude's a legend. I think this is one of the better Bond intro songs. Yeah, Maurice Binder. She's back. Oh, the title song is performed by Duran Duran. Damn. They're a great band. Richard Maybaum and Michael G. Wilson, the same two writers from the previous film. Money Penny, where are you? There you are. Thank goodness you're here, James. <laughs> That's very nice, Money Penny. You would realize that this is a prototype of a highly sophisticated surveillance machine. Now. If I place it on the microcomparator and compare it with a chip that Commander Bond recovered from the body of 003... <gasps> that was 003 who was dead in the first scene. Huh. You have exactly 35 minutes to get properly dressed, 007. Mm. 
with the cane. Is that Max Zarn? Yeah. Oh, Max Zarn is being played by Chris Walken himself. This is two years after Chris Walken made The Dead Zone. I watched that on the channel. Do check it out. It's a Stephen King adaptation. <laughs> Looks like Zarn's horse won. In all my years as a trainer, I've never seen a horse run such a fast last furlong. Sir Godfrey Tippett, our department. Oh, an MI6 agent. <laughs> steady, steady. She must take a lot of vitamins. <laughs> Perhaps Pegasus does too. <gasps> well, Mayday does look pretty intimidating. Oh. Change of location to France. Wow, what a beautiful set. Yeah, these masked men really make me suspicious. Why do Zorin's horses beat others with far superior bloodlines? This is a mystery. Could he be using drugs? Doping the horses? <coughs> <coughs> I knew it. Yeah, I, I don't think that looks like Mayday, so it's somebody else. Oh, it is Mayday, okay. That doesn't look like a dummy. That looks like a real person. It is a real person. Wow. Follow the parachute. In English, uh, out. Oh, nice. Nice stunt work. Yeah, that's another stunt man. <laughs> it was clear as day. But uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, it, it doesn't take away from the film. <laughs> what did you learn from Aubergine before his untimely demise? Well, only that Zarin is having a thoroughbred sale at his start not far from here. Yeah, the locations that these movies go to, they're always, always so impressive. What is he looking for? Come along, Tebbit, stop wheezing. <laughs> Why are you torturing him? Well, don't stand there panting, Tibbet. Start the unpacking. Here, let me help. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, he's helping by grabbing the umbrella. Good. Anything from St. John Smythe? Nothing about the sale, sir. But I'd hate to be his valet. Certainly going to have to buck up your idea. Yeah, they're already being washed. You look as though they were wiped over with an oily rag. Terribly sorry, sir. Do we have to keep this up when we're alone? Well, successful cover becomes almost second nature. There's the man I saw at the Pegasus stable. And even if Bond didn't recognize Mayday, I think Mayday recognized Bond. Ooh, gadgets! I like that. Oh, a five million dollar check. Mr. Conley, Mr. Schmidt. Bob Conley. <laughs> Tell me, are you a, a doctor of medicine? Uh -huh, no, no, no. I am Mr. Chodin's Reading consultant. That's a thing. What about fishing? Fly casting. Oh. You're giving yourself a way bond. Well, are you uh, buying or selling? Get her away from him. I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before. I suppose you uh, travel a lot. Your helicopter leaves in 20 minutes. Bond, as in Roger Moore, does look a little old for the role. What is Tibet up to? Oh man, he's gonna die, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just Bond. Quite a letter. Oh. I love when Bond movies use all these gadgets and contraptions. They really add character. St. John Smile, sleeping like a baby. They've been doping the horse with drugs. You see, these microchips a program to control an injection of additional natural horse steroids. Ah. I'm afraid I wasn't much help. Don't worry, it's all wrapped up. <laughs> nice one-liner. 
What are you up to, Mayday? You look like a Mortal Kombat character, dude. <laughs> he was the man at the Eiffel Tower. <gasps> oh no, they've identified him. Mayday, where have you been? I've been waiting for you. I see your woman. Very few words. Indeed. What's there to say? He's in the wrong place. You slept well? A little restless, but I got off eventually. <laughs> well, technically that's true. He did get off. Splendid. James Bond. He knows the true identity now. License to kill. Just going to town to get the car washed. Friends of yours? Exercise, boys. <gasps> oh no! Was he just killed? Did he rig up this entire course for his advantage? I'm sure there are easier ways to get rid of Bond. It's like a nitrous oxide, a NOS button on a horse. I've never seen that before. <laughs> it's hilarious. Sir Godfrey, let's get... Oh man, he was killed. Killing Tibbet was a mistake. I'm about to make the same mistake twice. Accidental drowning? That's what you're going with? Okay, is that realistic? Will that really work? Good morning, Comrade Sorry. Dude, it's General Gogol. He's back and being played by the same actor. Holy crap. I no longer consider myself a KGB agent. Oh. What would you be without us? A biological experiment? <laughs> you will come back to us, Comrade. No one ever leaves the KGB. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Yes, San Francisco. This is the heartland of electronic production in the United States, which accounts for what, 80%? Oh, wow. I want no part of it, thank you. As you wish. Hmm. The rest of our discussion must, of course, be confidential. Would you wait outside? Bye bye. <laughs> They're on an airship. Wow. Does anybody else want to drop out? <laughs> okay, it looks like they're near San Francisco. What a view to a kill. A view to a kill. Connolly is a geologist. Runs Zoran's oil reclamation project in the East Bay. His name is actually Hans Glau, a German pioneer in the development of steroids. Right, the horse doctor. During World War II, he experimented with steroids on pregnant women in the concentration camps in an Dude. attempt to enhance intelligence. That's effed up. But there was a side effect. They were psychotics. Is Zorin a product of these experiments? Because he's been described as a freak earlier. About the same time that Zorin came over to the West. There you go. Did Zorin be one of the steroid kids? I think so. I like this shot. I know that Zorin is targeting um, Silicon Valley, but I don't know how. Diffuse it. They suspect the KGB because Zorin has like two enemies now, the British intelligence and KGB. Time to die. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't this jam? <laughs> the pump again? No. It's just organic material. Oh man. <laughs> Polar Ivanova. Oh. You haven't changed. Well, you have. <laughs> You're even lovelier. Polar? Yes, darling? Oh. The tape? Bond switched them, didn't he? <laughs> Main strikes in three days. Oh. I'm running late. I can only spare a couple of minutes. Oh, it's that girl. 
It's that girl we saw at the Chateau in France. Yeah, this is a, a smaller scale Bond movie in the sense that it's not world domination or anything like that. It's just probably the destruction of uh, Silicon Valley and the control of microchips and the market. <laughs> that got me. Come out real slow. Just another Zoran stooge. Yes. Get back! <laughs> Zorin. He took over Sutton Oil in a rigged proxy fight. Oh. It's taken everything I had, all the cash, the furniture, everything. Just dropped the lawsuit and shut my mouth. Brave. I'd sell everything and live in a tent before I give up. Don't get any ideas, man. You're twice her age. <laughs> but I know you can't help yourself, Mr. Bond. Man, I'm going to miss, um... Roger Moore when he's gone. <laughs> What's wrong with your pets? We had an earth tremor. They're extremely sensitive to seismic activity. Well, on the tape, Zorin mentioned Silicon Valley. Main Strike. Hey, I know that place. Oh, Main Strike is actually in the name of a place. <gasps> <laughs> okay. You should have accepted my more than generous offer. He's a psychopath. What have they done? You discharged her. Hmm? So she and her accomplice came here to kill you. Then they set fire to the office. They're going to burn down the entire building. I hope we get to see more explosions in this movie. We only got to see one of that helicopter in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, Bond should be on the news and Zorin should figure out that they're still alive. Look, Captain, if you check with Chuck Lee of the CIA, he'll inform you who I am. We found his body in Chinatown. What? You're under arrest. Well, actually, Captain, I'm with the British Secret Service. Are you? Yes. And I'm Dick Tracy, and you're still under arrest. <laughs> is that true what he said back there? About the British Secret Service? Yes, I'm afraid it is. <laughs> I got him. Do oh, okay. They didn't actually show it. I just want to point out that we're well into the third act, and we still don't know the exact plan Zorin has. Uh, so far, again, this is not the best written Bond film I've seen. Dynamite. There's definitely going to be an explosion, isn't there? Zorin just has to blast through the bottom of these lakes to, to flood the fault. And create a double earthquake? Yes. Except right beneath us is the key geological lock that that keeps the faults from moving at once. Huh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <gasps> Holy crap, look at the amount of ex explosives at play. If it happened at the peak of the spring tide for maximum effect... I think that was stop-motion animation. But Mayday and my men! Yeah, a convenient coincidence. Mr. Zorn, those men are loyal to you! Yeah, he doesn't care. He's a psychopath. That's been established already. Oh! Crap, he's killing so many people just like that. And an underwater explosion. Horrific. Holy crap. He's just shooting at them. Oh. oh. I like the fact that they made this set and destroyed it. And I thought that creep loved me. <laughs> You're not the only one he double-crossed. Well, I guess she realizes she's been betrayed. Wow. This is the stuff I like. And he's advertising his name, Zorin Industries. <laughs> Come on.
Could it be more obvious? Get on the rig. I'll lower you down. Get on! Nice. That's actually a pleasant surprise seeing the henchmen and Bond working together. Oh, wow! She's sacrificing herself. That was unexpected, to say the least. Your plans are not going to work out, Mr. Zorin. Oh, dude! Wow, that's actually a real stuntman doing that. What an, what an incompetent police officer. But what a view. Oh no! He's down the airship to the Golden Gate Bridge. Are they actually shooting on location? Because that'd be the most impressive thing in the entire film. I don't think so. But it looks convincing. Satisfying explosion. The Order of Lenin for Comrade Bond. Wow. The first time ever awarded to a non Soviet citizen. I would have expected the KGB to celebrate if Silicon Valley had been destroyed. <laughs> well, it was a rogue agent. Where would Russian research be without it? <laughs> <laughs> At least they're self aware. Just like many other Bond films, almost all of them, apart from on Her Majesty's Secret Service. <laughs> and the film ends right here as expected. It wasn't the best Bond film, but it was fun. Okay, I took a little time to collect my thoughts. Uh, first off, I did have a good time generally, but I think this was definitely a weaker entry in the Bond franchise. I mean, John Glenn and Richard Maybaum and Michael G. Wilson, they did do a better job with this movie than with um, Octopussy. But I don't think the plot of this one is excellent in the grand scheme of things. This was Moore's final performance as Bond, and I think it was a somewhat competent send-off for the actor. I'd consider the main strengths of the film to be the performances from Moore and Walken, some of the action sequences, especially in the first and third act, and the music by John Barry. Whereas the plot was very small scale, the cinematography and location scouting were average, and some of the performances were pretty weak, like the actress who played Stacy. Let's start with the directing by John Glenn and the script by Richard Maybaum and uh, Michael G. Wilson. The main story here was about a rogue ex uh, KGB agent who wanted to destroy Silicon Valley to corner and take control of the microchip market, and Bond has to stop him. I don't think there was a real subplot though, and I don't mind that honestly. I think uh, they wanted to streamline the story and not make it over complicated like they did with Octopussy. There weren't too many twists and turns, and I think the biggest surprise of the movie was the redemption of the henchman uh, Mayday, who sacrifices herself after realizing that she was betrayed. That was a surprise. Another small surprise uh, was the return of General Gogo the head of the KGB. This was like his third or fourth appearance and that character is, is really growing on me now. Bond's main love interest here, uh, Stacy, wasn't that impressive compared to previous Bond girls. I don't think her performance was very noteworthy or her character very well written. Bond had to keep on rescuing her and I don't think her character had too much agency in the movie. I mean, Bond kept lying about his identity <laughs> and she kept on believing him. So make of that what you will. Christopher Walken's Zorin was pretty interesting though. I don't think Walken as an actor was used to his full potential. 
I think he was missing from the entire second act of the movie. I, I really wish we got more scenes with him on screen because he's a fantastic actor. And despite having a smaller role, I really did enjoy his performance here. He plays a psychopath and uh, a manic character so well, uh, especially th those scenes where he was shooting indiscriminately and laughing. <laughs> that was that was Christopher Walken. He always brings his A game, and this film was no different. Roger Moore's Bond, on the other hand, I, I, I generally enjoyed his performance, his acting performance, I mean, but he was way too old for his role by now. Uh, his love interest, including Stacy, they were probably half his age, and even though he really captured the essence of Bond, I could clearly tell that none of the stunts that were done by him, like he did, I think, in the first two or three films, the stunts by the stunt team themselves, they were excellent though. Some of the action sequences at the beginning and the end of the film were pretty enjoyable, like that ski scene and the scene over the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, they, were, they were pretty well done. And I also like the fact that there were so many gadgets and contraptions used in the production. That was a strong point in the movie. Another thing that was missing from this movie was any emotional depth or even a personal connection with Bond and the main story. I really can't put my finger on one, one single or one particular point, but I have to say this wasn't John Glenn's or Richard Maybaum's or Michael G. Wilson's best work. Moving on to the cinematography, which was okay, I guess. I think it's got a lot to do with the location scouting and... Um, the locations here weren't that exotic compared to any of the other Bond films, uh, and that was reflected in the cinematography here. There were moments of brilliance though, especially in the opening sequence, in the snow, and the final action scene where, where we got to see the real view for a kill, the namesake of the movie. I thought that was pretty cool. The music here by John Barry was pretty good. I don't think uh, too much new music was written for this film. We hear the main Bond theme several times and there might be an argument that it was overused. The sound design was a little better, especially with the gunshots, but the hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes sounded a little fake compared to previous Bond movies, especially the punch sounds. Just rewind and watch for yourself. Listen for yourself, I mean. The stunts by the stunt team, they were a particular highlight for me. Uh, they were clearly not by Moore. Watching the film in high definition made that crystal clear. But the stunt choreography was really well done overall. And so were the sets, props, and set design. The production end was fairly well done, especially the interior of Zorin's ship and the various gadgets and contraptions that, that were shown on screen. Explosions were crazy and chase scenes were pretty incredible. And that's half the reason why we pay for a Bond ticket in the first place. As I've talked about my criticisms extensively throughout the entire review, overall, A View to a Kill was enjoyable, but clearly one of the weaker entries in the Bond franchise. Roger Moore, although aging delivers, delivers a competent performance as Bond for the last time, Christopher Walken's Zorin was great, and so were the stunts at the beginning and at the end of the movie. The main love interest here, Stacy, was pretty forgettable to be honest, but I have to admit that the main henchman, Mayday's redemption arc, was a pleasant surprise. Her character really grew on me by the conclusion. This is the end of the Moore era. After seven movies and the start of Timothy Dalton's take on this iconic character. The Living Daylights is next and I'm pretty excited. Anyways, thank you for watching. I have a Patreon page. Consider being a Patreon. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you liked this video. Dislike it if you didn't. I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>